Today we're going to be in Mark 8, and uh, I'm just going to read to you the first uh, nine verses of, of, Mark, of Mark 8, and then we're going to dive into it um, a little bit. In those days, the multitude being very great and having nothing to eat, Jesus called his disciples and said to them, I have compassion on the multitude because they have now continued with me for three days and have nothing to eat. That's a dedicated crowd, right? And if I send them away hungry to their own houses, they will faint on the way, for some of them have come from afar. Then his disciples answered him, How can one satisfy these people with bread here in the wilderness? And he asked them, How many loaves do you have? And they said, Seven. So he commanded the multitude to sit down on the ground, and he took the seven loaves and gave thanks and broke them, and gave to his disciples to set before them, and they set before the multitude. They also had a few small fish. And having blessed them, he said to them also, or, or he set them also before them. So they ate and were filled. And they took up seven large baskets of leftover fragments. Now those who had eaten were about 4,000. And he sent them away. I, I think this is a remarkable, a remarkable miracle, right? And... and um, here we, have, here we have Jesus and this hungry group of people. Um, all of us knows what it's like to be hungry. Um, and probably you in your classes, you've got kids every day uh, who reach that point where they're starving to death because they haven't had a snack in 15 minutes. And they are starving to death, right? Uh, they are going to die if they don't eat, eat soon. Well, these folks had been with Jesus for three days in the hot sun. Uh, I'm not sure if any of them were close to death, but certainly more so than someone who's been without snack for 15, for 15 minutes. Um, and, and yet Jesus sees this um, and, and does this amazing miracle. Now, if you read through Scripture, this isn't the first time, right, that that uh, great miracles were done with, with bread. In fact, it's fascinating when you read through Scripture, you find all these great miracles, starting back in Exodus, right, when God rained manna down, down from above uh, and provided daily bread uh, for, the, for the Jews in the, in the wilderness. Um, we, find, we find all through Scripture, like Elijah, when, when uh, there was the, the widow that um, was, again, at her last, had her last little bit of flour and oil. And uh, the prophet said, hey, make, make me some bread first, and then there will be enough for you. And sure, sure enough, she made bread for, uh, for the prophet and, and uh, for as long as the famine uh, lasted in her land, uh, there was always enough flour and enough oil for her to provide for her and her and her family. Uh, even even in the book of Mark, in Mark chapter six, uh, we find that Jesus had done a very similar miracle uh, to the one that we we just read about, just two chapters two chapters before. Uh, there were 5,000 people out and uh, five loaves and two fishes, which is the more famous of the two stories because it involves a little boy who gave up his lunch, right? And anytime there's kids involved, uh, well, it just sort of gets more, more notoriety, right? But this little boy gave up his, gave up his lunch and uh, Jesus used it to, to feed the multitudes that day. So here we come to Mark 8, and we, we find a very similar scenario to, uh, to Mark chapter 6. And, and there, were some, there were some real issues 
um, there were some real issues at hand. And I want to I want to just go through those with you uh, in your fill in the blanks here for a moment. Um, first of all, the multitude had had a problem, right? Um, uh, and, and their problem was this, they were hungry. Um, and as we've already stated, that can be a real, real problem. Uh, I know for me, I get a little cranky when I, when I get hungry and when I need to eat, I need to eat. Um, correct? Yeah, that's right. Uh, I got one amen and it came in the form of a head nod. That's true. Um, but, but, but it says, in, in those days, the multitude being very great and having nothing to eat. So this is, this is a problem. This is a problem, right? Um, but, but I love the fact that, our, that these people's problems, and this is number two here, uh, show Jesus' compassion. So, so the people had a problem. But Jesus had great compassion on them. I have compassion on the multitudes because they have now continued with me for three days and have nothing to eat. I, I think it's important for us to note that God, God truly, truly does care about our problems. Uh, I've, I've heard so many people say over the years, and e even this week I've, I've heard someone, someone say something to this effect that um, I, I really don't feel comfortable going to God with my prayers because so many times they seem so petty. And what I would ask God to do seems so petty, and surely He has more important things to be doing than, than dealing with my little petty issues or my small, small problems. And I'll just work to take care of these for myself and let God deal with the bigger issues of, of life. After all, there, there are so many big problems in this world. Why don't we let our big God take care of those things? But, but we need to understand just like God cared for the hunger pains of this, this crowd. Now, it, it wasn't that they were about to die, for he said they might faint if they travel back. So, I mean, they were, they were hungry, uh, maybe to the point of passing out, but it doesn't say, hey, they're going to die if they don't get something to eat. They were just really, really hungry. Um, God cares about your problems. And, and no matter how small they are, never be afraid to carry your needs before the Lord in prayer. Because just as, just as the crowd had a problem this day and Jesus had compassion upon it, whatever your needs are, God looks down upon them with great compassion. In fact, Psalms 111, 4 says, The Lord is gracious. He's gracious and full of compassion. So, so in, this, in this story, we have the, the, the multitude's problem. Uh, the, the crowd of people had this problem, and we have Jesus with this great compassion in his heart. And you would think Jesus uh, taking this stand of compassion that his disciples would have been like, yes, once again. Let's, let's, let's watch Jesus uh, do this amazing thing. But, but that wasn't exactly their, their response. So we see not only, not only the crowd had a problem and Jesus had compassion, but we find once again, after the disciples had seen so many miracles and great things, that there was still doubt on the part of the disciples. The disciples said to him, How can one satisfy these people with bread in the wilderness. This seems like the most stupid question that has ever been asked. How can one satisfy these people with bread? I will tell you from the experience of two chapters ago. How can one do it just the way Jesus did a few months ago? He can do that again, right? How can one do it? Well, you have seen Jesus over and over again. In fact, in the, in the chapter before, uh, so just days before this account, they, they had seen Jesus cast a demon out of a, of a young girl and he, heal a mute and a, and a deaf man. 
How can one do it? Well, on the same authority that healed that mute and deaf man, I, I would almost, I, I, wow, right? How could, you, how could you not believe? Disciples, you just seen them do these miracles. Disciples, you saw them just a few weeks or maybe a few months ago do this same kind of miracle with less. In fact, uh, at that, that first miracle, there were 5,000 people recorded, which most would believe that means that there were maybe 20,000 people total in the, in the crowd with women and children. Um, and he fed, more, he fed more people with less food, right? So, so that day, they, he had, he had 5,000 that were recorded with, with five loaves and two fishes. Here, here they've got 4,000 with seven loaves of bread and a few small fish. So, so they have more. Now, now, given the supply still isn't equal to the demand. But they had seen Jesus do this before, and now there's this other opportunity. You would think that they would be so filled with faith that this would be a no-brainer for them. I find in my life that it's, it's much like this many, many times. I've seen God work uh, in, in my life in many, many ways. Like I, I've seen God do things that I would look at as, as miraculous, whether it is through His provision, whether it is through uh, healing, what, whatever the case might be. I've seen God work in, in my life. And yet I'm so amazed at myself many times that when I get into a situation where things feel, feel difficult or the problem seems large, Many times I, I, I approach God with this sense of doubt of, could he really do it again? Could he really do it again? I mean, he's, he's been so great, but I, I, I doubt or I live with this sort of lack of faith. Even though I've experienced him in great ways before, I find myself much like the disciples, not trusting him, not putting my full faith in him, um, as, as I should. And I have to believe this is very frustrating uh, for Jesus. Probably the only thing that would be more frustrating is what he encountered with the Pharisees because after he did this miracle, the next verse says, and the Pharisees sought Jesus to give them some kind of sign from heaven. I'm like he just fed 4,000 with a few loaves and fishes. That seems like a big enough sign from heaven, right? We talked about the religiosity last week. But his disciples, they lived with this kind of ongoing doubt. Um, and, and I think, you know, we, we look at them and sometimes we, we give them a hard time. Um, at the end of the day, they walked with Jesus. They walked with Jesus. They saw these things firsthand. And they still had, still had these, these struggles. Um, so I think for us, they're, they're a good example and a bad example. Number one, they're a good example in the fact that we shouldn't feel bad when we struggle in our faith and in trusting God. But secondly, we need to also understand that Jesus poured into them for these three and a half years for the sole purpose of trying to build that faith to a point where when he was gone, they could fully trust him. And so my prayer for myself and for you is that we would develop, even in the midst of our doubt, that we would just grow in our faith to a point where at some level we can trust God even when, it's, even when it's difficult. So the last thing we see in this story is God's provision. Um, and I think it's pretty amazing. We've, we've already read it that Jesus took these fish, he took these, these loaves of bread, he multiplied them, and he fed, he fed the multitude um, he fed the multitude with him. Again, the supply was enormously smaller than the demand, but, but God, God did the work. God did the work. And, and, and this is just a reminder to me that um, God, God doesn't need much. God doesn't need much to do great things in my life. And I, if I will just offer him whatever I have, he can work through that and he can do, he can do great things. I, I love the part of this story as well that just says there were baskets full left over when, they, when, when he was finished performing, performing this, this miracle. Um, 
He just, he just didn't feed the people, but they were fed till they were full. Like they had all that they could eat and there were baskets full left over. So I don't know, maybe just sent, them, sent these home with them on the journey so they had provisions for their next meal as well. But whatever the case, he didn't just meet the need. He just didn't provide for the need. But there was, there was more. There was an abundance. And that's the kind of God we serve. He's an abundant God. He always has not just enough, but more than enough. And we can trust him. We can trust him to provide in our lives, even when the problem is big and even when the need is great. Even when the need is small, right? We can trust him. We can go to him. He cares enough for us. Even in the midst of our doubt, even in the midst of our fear, he cares enough for us to provide for everything we have need of. Let's pray. God, we love you and we thank you for your reminder today that you are a miracle working God. Forgive us for times when we don't trust you fully. Um, it can be difficult, Lord, and, and sometimes life gets in the way. And just like the, the disciples, Lord, we, we find ourselves looking at our situations and our problems um, through, a, through a scope of reality and not a scope of faith. And uh, Lord, I just pray that we would learn to trust you, to put our faith in you, not in just what is seen, but, but what, we, uh, what we can't see. Um, our God who is working on our behalf. Lord, let us trust you. Um, we love you and we thank you for your rich provisions in our lives. And we just ask, Lord, that this day that you would let us walk with a new level of faith, trusting you fully for all things. In your strong name, amen.